Well, the White House celebrating great news today. The U.S. economy grew at 3% in the third quarter, the strongest such showing for, the, for that quarter since 2014. On top of that, consumer spending, well, by the way, was the main engine of growth for this one, 2.4%. Uh, by the way, consumers are unusually optimistic, in fact, and they expect great things ahead. You combine that with strong labor markets, unemployment at 16 percent, record highs in the stock market, and the economy continues to look very strong under President Trump. Here with me now to discuss uh, David Bonson, CIO of Bonson Group of Hightower and author of Crisis of Responsibility, and back with us, Maya McGinnis. David, I've got to start with you. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting because I tweeted out first thing this morning, as soon as the uh, GDP numbers, I tweeted out a chart and I got a lot of pushback. Well, Trump doesn't deserve credit. What has he done? This is Obama's economy. And what I don't think people understand is when you unlock animal spirits, is, which is what I think happened on November 8th, they take on a life of their own. Yeah, there's two elements here that are really important. If it had just been one quarter, I was myself skeptical after Q2. I said, OK, we had a print here. Let's wait and see. But this is a 3% print, Charles, with the hurricanes. They were expecting a 20, 40 basis point drag on GDP. So this is very strong. And there hasn't been a legislative victory yet. This is pre-tax reform. Your animal spirits thesis is right, but also the deregulation. That is working its way through the economy. And I think that I follow the energy sector very closely. The CapEx and business investment projects they're approving at an executive branch level is through the roof. These are projects, by the way, that mean these are multi-billion dollar projects for the most part. And multi-year, multi-billion right. dollar projects. Right. All right. So, Maya, the big thing now is, and I'm not sure, but I, when I hear these politicians, particularly Republicans, saying, hey, this whole thing will go up in a puff of smoke if we don't pass tax reform and other things, I feel like it's an unnecessary scare tactic because I think this is something that the administration wants to see continue, and if they don't mess with it, it will. Well, I do think the point that the confidence, the, it's sort of anticipatory confidence that's really driving the economy right now, and it's working very well, and I agree with the point. I sort of didn't think this was going to be sustained in the first couple of quarters, and this appears to be more lasting than people would have expected. And so I actually do think now we're going to have to start to deliver, and we're going to have to see some real policies that will actually back up this confidence about being able to grow the economy in, the sustained, in a sustained way. That's why I think getting tax reform done is going to be immensely important. Um, and I'd, I'd reemphasize that getting it done in the right way where it doesn't balloon the national debt right. is going to be critical for the long-term sustainability of the growth numbers. Because you can grow the economy for two or three quarters, but what you really want to do is be able to grow it for year after year after year. And so that means we need policies that are focused on the long-term, not just short-term boosts. And that's where looking at the details of these policies that they do need to pass will be important. I think the pressure is on that tax reform succeed. Does it have to succeed by Thanksgiving? No, I think those da dates are, uh, those right. deadlines are absolutely artificial. I agree with you on that. I'm not sure why they do that. The political pressure uh, just means there's the potential for failure. Let's get tax reform done, but let's get it done right. right. And obviously adding months onto that, if that's working out the details and improving the tax bill in a way that will grow the economy more, well worth it. David, um, you know, we talk about these surveys all the time. To me, uh, the best survey that I saw this week was the, in the form of Caterpillar's earnings. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> North America, to your point, through the roof. These aren't frivolous things. You know, this, you know, this is the kind of investment. Durable goods, business investment, bottomed in, Mar in May, has come on like gangbusters since then. So there's clearly some wind in this in these cells. And it's in the small business side and with, uh, co with corporate America, you're seeing it in the earnings. You mentioned Caterpillar. The whole industrial sector this uh, earnings season had very positive results. I agree with Maya. You want sustainable results. And that's where a GDP print in a particular quarter is good. But what becomes great is when you have an environment that unlocks animal spirits, that leads to sustained capex. For all the stock market move under the Obama administration, we didn't have a lot of capital expenditure no, investment. Right, right. That's what will lead to a sustainable market. Both you and Maya agree that uh, there was some skepticism on both of your parts, and you had a 3.1 and now a 3% uh, print. Does that also underscore the fact that maybe we don't have to live in a, in a sub 3% uh, period? Because people were starting to wonder. We only had a couple 3% three, uh, 3 years under uh, President Bush. So uh, American capitalism had let people down for a very long period of time. Well, the belief that we are in a permanently stagflationary or, or uh, this kind of secular stagnation, to use Larry Summers' term, always comes from left-wing people, Charles. They believe that the capitalism is limited in what it can do. 
I disagree with the thesis. But it is uh, true that if we were going to have tax reform that blew out the deficit, which we don't have to have, right. that that would not be as permanently sustainable. We need all of the above. Maya, I've only got uh, a couple of seconds here, but I do want yep. uh, to, to know, should people now be hopeful? Is 4% achievable? Is 5% achievable? Because it really sounded like a pipe dream, even on the campaign trail. Yeah, I am very optimistic about capitalism, but what I'm also realistic about is aging. Uh, we are all getting older as a country, and the pr challenge we face in terms of economic growth is that the labor market, uh, many of those people are moving sure. into retirement, sure. and that's a number that we can't change. And, we, and so, we also have that, and that is reflected, too, with the skills gap situation, which we the, continue to hear is a major the problem. The skills Guys, gap, yep, and the entitlement it, program. So there's a lot we still have to work on. But, gotta let it go there. Thank you both thanks. very, very much.